Welcome to Networking Essentials presented by Portland Workforce Alliance. My name is Ebony Lawrence, and I am a program director at Kaiser Permanente in the Strategic Implementation Office, uh, which is our strategy department. And my name is Kaylee Van Hold, and I am the director of People at Zapprove, which is a local software company, and I'll be Ebony's co-presenter today. Right. Today's agenda. So today we're going to talk about what is networking, why is networking important, virtual networking, how to enter the room. We're going to go over an elevator pitch. And then also we're going to talk about networking for introverts overall. And then also how to stay in touch after a networking event. All right. What is networking? So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking a crowded room with lots of people that's really awkward and everyone trying to reach one person just to gain their attention and have a conversation. Uh, sounds painful. <laughs> no, that's not what a networking event is. Simply put, networking is intentionally connecting and building community and relationships with others who share similar interests. Also, the more we practice, the more our confidence builds, improving our experiences and willingness to go back and, and continue to do more of that. And I'll just give the, um, let you all know that I'm an introvert by design. So I'm gonna share that with you all, all right? Networking is important um, both for professional and personal reasons. Um, professionally, your, help, your connections help you as they help others. Um, it provides you with advice, referrals, and sharing best practices in your subject area. Um, it can provide you with insights into trends, technology, and new information. Um, it enhances your career opportunities in your field and helps diversify your professional life. Um, but on the personal side, it really helps in other ways in terms of things like really satisfying our human need for belonging and building connection with others. Um, it'll help you expand your comfort zone and become more comfortable with the idea and practice of networking. Um, and it can lead to self growth and self-confidence, um, which can result in new contacts as well as friends, as well as general learning and growing in, as an individual. New networking contacts can introduce you to new opportunities for growth in life generally. And I think this graphic is great to show early on because it shows just how many people are in your network and how your network isn't just one group. Um, perhaps you could think of your work network as the folks in blue, but think about how you can see individuals in your family or friends or friends of friends, um, perhaps um, exemplified by colors like green or orange or, or uh, purple or red here. And thinking about just kind of how all the connections in our lives um, interconnect and how we can cultivate those relationships and remember that there's many intersections between these groups. Um, with that in mind, too, I think it's good to touch on informal networking, which is something good to consider. We're not always talking about a special networking event or a coordinated meeting with a professional contact. Sometimes networking means asking your friend's parent or an aunt and uncle about their career trajectory, uh, whether they know somebody who's hiring or someone they can introduce you to learn more about an area uh, of interest that you have. I think also we would be remiss if we didn't talk about virtual networking. Um, this year, especially since the onset of COVID-19, we've had to move so many aspects of our lives online, uh, both professionally and personally. And this includes networking. Uh, many events that have traditionally been always held in person, like seminars, conferences, or even PWA's Expo have been brought online and really innovated and changed. Um, and I know, you know, sometimes the last thing that any of us want is another Zoom call in our lives, but I do think it's important to remember that networking events are still happening and it's a great way to continue building your professional network even in these uncertain times. It can also be a great way to dip your toes in the water if networking is something that's intimidating to you. Um, research events online, pick one that has a structure that you feel comfortable with and maybe it's one where you can leave your camera off initially or communicate with via chat if that makes you more comfortable. I think the most critical thing that we can all remember as things to continue to change whether online or in person is just to be flexible. For many folks, the rapid virtual transformation has been wonderful as it's provided opportunities to connect uh, more personally in a venue where they feel more comfortable. Um, though, of course, there will come a time, hopefully in the not too far future, where we can all gather in person again sometimes. Um, and keeping that in mind, one of the most important things to think about is how do we enter the room? All right. 
So how do we enter the room? The first thing that I want to call out is be yourself. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking easier said than done. But who's better than you? So I'm going to go down to my quote that I have, which is be yourself because everyone else is taken. It's one of my favorite quotes because it's true. Be true to yourself and be yourself. Um, I'm going to go back to the, the paragraph on the top, which is as you prepare for a networking event, whether virtual or in person, it's important to prepare effectively. And a big part of this is thinking about what you are looking to do and how you set yourself up for success. So for me, I mentioned earlier that I'm an introvert. Um, people wouldn't tell you that if they uh, if you met them. And I'm going to uh, talk about that a little bit later in uh, my personal brand. Um, however, when I go to networking event, I like to bring a buddy. And why I like to bring a buddy is because this individual can help me work the room and help me navigate the room. They can introduce me to people and they can talk me up. So that's that wing friend. And then also think about what's your game plan? Set expectations for yourself. So set a goal. Say, I want to meet three people. And if I meet three people, that's success for me. Or if I meet two people, that's success for me. It's okay. If you want, if your goal is just to, I want to go to my first networking event, that's your goal. But just have your plan on what works best for you. Defeat the imposter syndrome. So I know when you walk into the room, sometimes you feel like, gosh, everyone's in here with so much experience. Everybody's so smart. And then you think, oh, I don't belong here. No, you belong in that room. You are smart, you are wise, and you bring value to the conversation. Um, you're supposed to be in that room on your seat at the table. And if they say that the table was too small, well, tell them they need to bring a bigger table. Take up space in that room. And that's how you enter a room. All right. So I talked a little bit about personal brand when I said that I'm an introvert. But if someone was to say, do you know Ebony Lawrence? I doubt that they would think or say I was an introvert. Um, before I go into that, I, I have a couple of graphics on the top of the screen. And these graphics are brands. And there are marketing brands. And so I decided to not add any titles to them. So we have Amazon, we have Nike, we have TikTok, we have Twitter, we have Adidas, we have Instagram, and we have Facebook. And so without me writing their names, I'm sure you know exactly what these logos are. So their brand is with them every day and your brand is with you every day. Personal branding is the practice of marketing yourself, experiences, and future goals. It is an ongoing process of developing and maintaining your own reputation. I know you all have heard of the phrase word of mouth. And so at these networking events, that's when you'll have, when, when you're building your, your brand and networking, the word of mouth will say, hey, I met Ebony at this event and she was great right? Because they enjoy my personality, my energy, sense of humor, and then also the work I produce. Ask yourself, what impression do you want to leave behind? So some of the tips I want to leave you all with. So have a sense of the structure of the event and make a plan. So I talked about that a little bit earlier when we when I talked about why are you going and setting your goal. Ask for advice and insight and guidance when you're at these events. So this is an opportunity to have a quick conversation. I call it like the quick mini mentor conversation. Um, but it's an opportunity to say, you know, learn a little bit about their career pathway, which is next on my list. And so when I say ask about their career pathway, I think about when I graduated from the University of Oregon um, many years ago now, but I remember graduating and I remember looking at job descriptions and thinking, gosh, none of these job descriptions fit my major. So how did these individuals get these roles? And that's what you want to learn. You want to learn how did they navigate their career and how did they get where they are now? And so, yes, this is their elevator speech, which we'll talk about uh, in a little while. 
conclude the discussion by asking for an informational interview. So why this is important is because networking, you're only supposed to be talking to an individual for maybe five to 10 minutes, maybe even less. Um, so this is just kind of that first introduction. What you wanna do is get this person's information so you can schedule an informational interview so you can learn a little bit more about that person. But what you really want to do is make sure that you ask for two contacts um, before leaving that individual and ask them if they can contact you with two people. Because this individual that you meet may not be the person who's going to give you your next job, but there might be an opportunity with their network. Um, be able to clearly articulate your vision and where you see yourself in the next two to three years. So I know what you're thinking. I don't know what I want to do tomorrow. <laughs> However, you don't have to necessarily know exactly what you want to do, but it is good to know that I'm looking for an internship. Um, I'm looking for a summer job um, or just to talk a little bit about where you see yourself in the next couple of years. And that could be college and that's OK, but just be able to kind of give a little bit of what you're looking for. Listen. Uh, silence can be beautiful. So you want to make sure that you balance both because you want to be able to have this individual learn a little, about, a little bit about you and you learn a little bit about that individual as well. And then also, um, I, who, who isn't talking to someone? Try talking to that person. And so I am going to pass it over to my co-host so she could tell you a little bit about um, what it means to talk to an individual who's not talking to anyone. Yeah, Ebony, thanks so much. Um, I love talking to this example because it's actually how I got my first full-time job. I was at a college networking event and I didn't really even know where to start. It felt very intimidating, but I thought that person over there isn't, doesn't have anyone to talk to. Um, so I approached the table and I started talking to the man there and it turned out he was the CEO of a small company. Um, and within six months like, of, of meeting him, I ended up getting a job um, as an associate recruiter um, for his consulting firm because he remembered our interaction and I followed up on LinkedIn. Um, and I'll, I plug this by saying that um, sometimes the larger scale companies and brands will have um, long lines to talk um, to their representatives at networking events, but um, there can be a lot of value in looking at small businesses where you might not know the company or the corporation that's being advertised um, because you never know where the opportunities are gonna lie. And it's a great place um, to start out and potentially build your confidence as well. Great segue into have confidence. You're probably asking, why you? Nope, the real question is why not you? Like I said earlier, you belong there. So I'll end with my quote, which is comfort zones are where dreams go to die. And like I mentioned um, with my example um, of how I got my first full-time job by talking to that person that no one else was talking to, I had to introduce myself somehow. And I actually used an elevator pitch to make that introduction. Um, and so what are elevator pitches? Um, they're really a well-known component of networking that are really loved by some people and absolutely terrified or hated by others. But at the end of the day, it's just a memorable way to introduce yourself professionally. It's made up of a few different components. It includes introducing yourself with a professional persona, sharing a problem, action, and result to showcase your experience, and connecting to the other person's needs with an offer. To give you a little bit more information, um, an elevator speech is a short summary that's used to quickly and simply define you and what you bring to the table. And it comes from the idea that it should be possible to deliver the summary in about the span of a time of an elevator ride, between 30 seconds to two minutes. And that the idea of an unanticipated um, meeting with someone important in an elevator can always happen. If the conversation inside the elevator um, in those few seconds is interesting and value adding, maybe the conversation will continue after the elevator ride, perhaps with the exchange of contact information or scheduling a meeting. I think it's important to have these pocket elevator speeches ready for these type of chance encounters. Um, and when networking, you wanna be able to succinctly tell people who you are, what you do and what you're interested and how you can be a resource to your listeners. Remember again, it's all about you and it should be something you're comfortable and confident in. Um, and it really can be tailored to specific instances. So what I'd like to do is actually share an example of an elevator pitch. And for then, maybe that I want to introduce myself to Ebony because I know that she is a respected leader at a company that has a position open that I'm interested in. 
And you'll see here that I've highlighted the different components that I called out earlier, just to kind of help make these example make sense. So I might say, hi, Ebony, nice to meet you. And hopefully she'll wave or shake my hand if it's safe to do so. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing today? I'm great. Do you mind if I introduce myself quickly? Yeah. Great. So I'm a senior human resources professional that's passionate about building meaningful employee experiences um, and really training new team members. Uh, so I'm actually currently in a position as an HR generalist at Example Corporation. And some of my recent challenges have been um, around changing our learning and development training courses to an engaging remote model. I introduced a new series of video modules to be used alongside interactive Zoom session for managers um, to be carried out across all the departments. And we actually managed to train as many managers last year um, with a more flexible schedule. And I saw that you actually have a few HR business partner jobs posted on your careers page. I think my experience would be really well suited to your organization's needs. Are you still accepting ex applications? And in that yeah. case, <laughs> hopefully she says yes. Um, but she, if she doesn't, maybe she would be willing to pass my resume along to the hiring team for consideration next time or connect me with someone else that she knows. I think one good thing to call out with this is that in this case, I kind of ran through my whole elevator pitch as, you know, sort of a speech, but in real life, there may be more flexibility. There may be more give and take and active conversation. So don't get so stuck in your elevator pitch that you're not willing to stop and listen to the interactions that the other person might have. I know this can seem really intimidating. Um, and especially for those of us who do ident identify as um, introverts or people who, who could be an introvert in some situations and extrovert in others, it is really tough. Um, but like Ebony called out earlier, um, comfort zones are where dreams go to die. And so the best thing we can do if we're interested in networking and building our professional network is to try and practice. So we just want to acknowledge that. That said, sometimes, especially for introverts, it's really important to know how to move on from a conversation. Sometimes it's just time. Maybe you feel like you don't have much to contribute at this point. Maybe you feel uncomfortable, or maybe there's another person at the networking event that you really want to talk to. And so it's good to have a couple easy ways to get out of a conversation. And I can kind of categorize those as either honesty or appreciation. An example of honesty might just be the per really telling the person that you're ready to move on for a specific reason. An example of this might be saying, this has been a great conversation. Um, I'm actually hoping to catch someone from another company before the event is over. Can we exchange contact info? That again, bring, gives you a chance to bring the conversation um, offline from the moment, but uh, potentially follow up and still make the connection. You also can uh, express appreciation. You can say something like, I really appreciate you talking with me, but I don't want to take any more, up any more of your time. So I'll follow up over email. This shows uh, thanks for the time that they've spent um, considering what you have to say and sharing their um, expertise with you. And also again, it gives you a bridge for future connections. Staying in touch, whether you've made your exit gracefully or not, <laughs> it's good to um, find ways to follow up with the folks that um, are important to you in terms of building those professional con um, connections. The first thing I always say is learn the other person's preferred communication methods. They might like to email, text, or call, or they may prefer to connect in person over a video call. Um, also remember that they may have a busy schedule and they might not reply right away. I think it is important to follow up promptly though, um, so that the other person can remember the interaction that you've had and your personal and professional goals that you've hopefully shared with them. In some cases, it might be appropriate to connect on social media, but remember um, that you may want to uh, uh, separate your social medias into ones that you use in the professional sphere and ones that you only use in the personal sphere and that others might be doing the same thing. Um, often a great place to connect is on LinkedIn as it does have a professional reputation. Um, so great to send um, a request to connect along with a thank you note. Um, if it's appropriate, it might also be, um, you might want to follow them on Twitter. Um, some folks do have Twitters that they maintain for um, uh, professional or personal um, goals that they're willing to share and you can learn a lot from their expertise on there. Um, but just definitely keep a close eye on to what um, folks are sharing on those channels and if it is appropriate to connect with them. Uh, finally, I would say just asking to make sure that your um, requests and follow-ups are, you know, clear and respectful. Know what you're asking for a person from a person. I actually get a lot of requests from candidates who I network with 
to do things like review their resume and let, let me know if there's any positions that would be appropriate for uh, you know, me to apply to. And these are kind of vaguer asks aren't necessarily a great idea because you're then asking the other person um, to do the work for you. A better idea is to ask about a specific opportunity or request like for instance, I'm looking for a mentorship in human resources. Would you be willing to talk with me for 15 minutes about the internship on their team? Um, and remember that the person you're asking for help with and that you're following up with, they may say no to your request and that's okay. It doesn't necessarily mean that you failed. You can always try again later or better yet, ask if they have any other connections that can help you more immediately. That concludes the majority of kind of what we wanted to share with you today. Um, we do have a few resources here that we hope you'll take advantage of um, in terms of seven networking skills by the National Society of High School Scholars, how to make um, the most out of networking events by The Balance, and networking for introverts by The Muse. Thank you so much uh, for all of your time and thank you to you, Ebony. Yeah, we just want to thank you all for attending our, se our session, Networking for Essentials, presented by Portland Workforce Alliance, and we hope you enjoyed your time with us. Have a great day. Bye.